really d doesn't take you far enough, right? So you can do you can do very basic stuff. You can maybe put up like a personal portfolio web page. Um, not much further from that, right? That's pretty much where where I left you off. So today I wanna I'm gonna just show you very very quickly a couple of the technologies involved in the next the next phase that you need. Okay, okay. Um, so actually there is a question I received a question about uh, search engine optimization and uh, we'll just we'll talk about that for a few minutes um, and then we'll move on okay so I assume most of you have heard of this or maybe seen this acronym search engine optimization you've, you've probably heard of that you've maybe read it on, on somewhere on, read about it somewhere on the internet um, so that stands for search engine optimization. Optimization. Okay. So, does anyone know the story of Google? Generally, rough outline. Right. Do you know that there were two founders of Google? Right. And did you also know that the idea for Google came out of their? I don't know if it was both or one. Out of a PhD thesis that was written. Right? Okay, so bearing that in mind, so always remember Google comes from a very much an academic culture. Okay? And so one thing, uh, like, I don't know if any of you have ever been involved in academics in one way or another. Like, have any of you ever written maybe a, uh, an article that was published in an academic journal? No? Okay, so I've, I've written a couple, I've published in conference proceedings and in a few journals. Um, so, what Generally, what uh, you know, all journal articles are not created equal. Okay, there are some crap articles, right, with some crap methodology and and analysis and conclusion, right, that aren't worth the weight of the paper they're printed on. But there are also really, really great, great studies, right, that that are profound and you know really push the boundaries. So what ends up happening is you you know, and this isn't a law, this is a general rule of thumb, are the good papers get referenced a lot, right? Like if you're, you know, Albert Einstein wrote a couple of papers, There's, it's called his Miracle Year, he wrote three seminal physics papers, right? And basically if you're, if from beyond that, if you wrote a physics paper, you referenced those papers, okay? So you can kind of see how, as a rule of thumb, Generally, you know, the more uh, citations to a paper, uh, the better it is, mostly. Sometimes, right, there are some major, major articles that get retracted all the time, right? Like the, the article that, that sparked the whole autism vaccine scare, that was retracted because it had a terrible methodology. Anyways, we won't, we won't get sidetracked on that discussion. Um, so. The guys uh, from Google, they were very much aware of this thing, of this phenomenon where, uh, you know, uh, where the more a paper is cited, it's probably a good indicator that it's a good paper, that whatever is in there is pr profound or, you know, uh, really important for the field. So they actually used that concept for the web, okay, which actually makes so much sense because uh, the guy who invented the web, like all the HTML stuff that we and CSS, the guy that invented that wrote HTML 1.0. Tim Berners Lee, he he, his whole idea was to create the web for academic papers, right? So let me let me show you this here. Um, so for example. Um, so in my thesis, I reference about a hundred papers, right? And so let's look up one here. So his idea was, so if you read an academic paper, uh, you'll kind of go through here and you'll see there are um, citations. See this right here? This is a citation. So right now, if I want to figure out what this Keidel 1956 is, I have to go to the end of the paper, 
I have to look here at the listings, find it, find the journal, right? But his idea was that should be a link. He quoted, he called it a hyperlink, right? You should just be able to click on that paper and boom, it takes you to that paper, right? So the whole, the web started off as a solution for academics, for, for papers, okay? So, <coughs> So Google came around and they, they saw this and they, and they thought, well, this is actually a pretty good idea. Because does anyone remember pre-Google? Does anyone remember any pre-Google internet uh, search engines? Can anyone think of some? Yes. Alta Vista. Alta Vista was one. Anyone else? Any others? Yahoo. Yahoo? Yahoo actually started off as an index, not a search engine. So an index means human beings went there and said, okay, this is a website, and typed in the link. I think now they've probably changed. I, I don't really use Yahoo, but I assume they've changed and they, they're doing more search stuff. But Yahoo is a good example. Yahoo started in that pre-Google age, right? What else? What other web? What, what, yeah? Uh, they do have now, that came after Google, but there was one called Hotbox, there was Alta Vista, there was Lycros, uh, there was a couple, there was a handful. I think I always used Alta Vista until I discovered Google and that was it, okay? So, how did sites like Alta Vista, how did they, let's say you were looking for, you searched for cats. How would they, so let's, uh, so there's a million pages on the web that have the word cat in it. So how, do you th how did Alta Vista rank their pages? How did they put pages at the top? How do you think? Yeah. Nope, they couldn't do that because they would need access to all the web servers then. So they couldn't do that. Nope, they didn't do that. All they did was they counted the number of occurrences. So if you had a page about cats and you had the word cat in your page 99 times and someone else had it 80 times, your page is going to appear at the top, okay? Does anyone see an enormous problem with doing it this way? Uh, sure, crazy people, yep. Yeah. But I'm thinking of not the crazy people, I'm thinking of the intelligent people. Well, not, you know, yeah. Well, it doesn't have to do any with people, remember. It has nothing to do with the actions of people, right? So all the search engine does is it visits the web page, store, like puts all the, all the text into a database, and then counts up the occurrence of each. So it's, there's 99 cats here, right? So can anyone think of a of a big problem. Why, why is that a terrible way to rank search engine, to rank web pages in a search engine? Why? Yeah, because watch this. This is what people would do. This is what people would do. They would get their text file. Right? Uh, yes, okay. So they had edited it, and they put in their body, whoops, HTML, HTML, okay, and then they put in their body, like this, and they do this. Okay, and then they do this. Okay, now we can do this. So we say paragraph ID equals hidden. And then we do this. And then we say, uh, we put it in the head. We'll say uh, ID, no, uh, style. Uh, so... Um, hidden, and we'll say, uh, f was it font color, or is it just color? Let's try font color. White, 
And let's see now. Color? Okay. Oh, did it work? Okay. So, and then they say this. This is my cool page about cats, right? And then you go here. Oh, but I don't see all of this, okay? So, that was a big problem in, let's say, 1996, 7, 8, right? Pre-Google. So, uh, these two brilliant guys from Stanford come along and they say, okay, actually, we're not going to base it on word count because that's easily gameable. That's the term. You can game it easily, right? So what they did instead is they based the rank. So they called, some, they, they called it page rank, and this is what this is described in their thesis. So then the ranks of pages are decided by how many pages link to that page, right? So if my page about cats has no, no other pages that Google has indexed, has a link to my page, then my page is going to be way, way down at the bottom, okay? At least according to PageRank. So PageRank <coughs> is pretty, was one of the only things that Google makes public. So there are many, many, many ways that Google can uh, rank their pages, okay? But for obvious reasons, they keep it a secret, which is why I think largely if anyone tries to sell you search engine optimization, they are trying to scam you, okay? Because like, you can't know this stuff. It's, it's, it's a secret. Google keeps this stuff secret, okay? So... Here are, you know, and I've, and I've done, I've tried to game Google before. Remember I said I first, I started learning this stuff. I created a rent, renter's web page. So what I did was I created torontorents.com. I created montrealrents.com, vancouverrents.com, winnipegrents.com, all these. And I thought I was being smart and I linked all those pages together knowing about page rank. Right? I, I knew about PageRank and I thought, oh, if I create six pages and link them all together, well, hey, I'll go, but no, no, Google knows. Okay? So they were able to determine that the pages were similar and they did something called sandboxing. So you get your, you know, I had to look, look way, way at page 23 before I could see my listing again. Right? So after that, that was the end of my CEO uh, uh, attempts, right? The best thing you can do, so one thing you can do is try and get people to link to you, as long as it's fairly organic. Okay, so I mean, if you email people and say, oh, I have a site about cats, so do you. Do you want to exchange links? Okay, that's fine. Um, and, you know, having relevant text on your page, because Google can't search, actually, Google can search images now, but you can't search images with text. You can search images with an image, but you can't search images with text, okay? So having just lots and lots of, that's why you know, a lot of sites now might have blogs, right? They have a, a blog that goes along with their uh, retail e-commerce site, right? Because one of the only ways to do it is to have good text, relevant text, okay? Um, Rel so text that's, you know, so if you have a site about fishing that sells fishing gear, have someone write a blog about fishing, right? You know, and then, you know, fishing will come up, other rods, reels, lines, lures, all the, all the appropriate terms will come up. And hopefully that'll, that'll push you up to the top, okay? Um, so another thing you can do, so that's if you have no money. If you have an advertising budget, um, Google actually has a couple of uh, solutions for you. So they have um, AdWords and AdSense. Okay? So 
let me just double check that I remember which one is which. So AdWords allows you to purchase search words, search keywords, AdWords. Yeah, uh, advertisement. Yes, exactly. So when you let's say you search uh, baseball bats <coughs> for some reason. <coughs> so you see this stuff here. This is a sponsored link, and these here. If you click on them, uh, you're giving these. You're giving. Uh, actually, you're charging this. Whoever's paying for this ad, they're probably paying depending on the keyword, because it you know different keywords cost different amounts of money. Uh, between a few cents upwards to a few dollars, right? So you can pay to have your site appear here, okay? And uh, it's it's pretty good in the sense that you can, for example, set a daily budget. Like, okay, I want to spend 20 bucks today. And then you can set all the keywords that you want to want to purchase. Like some keywords, uh, you know, are much more expensive. And then if you get to combinations of words, that's cheap, right? Like when I had my apartment site, if I try, I couldn't, I couldn't pay for the word apartments. That's that's far too common, right? So what I did, so I I bought Toronto apartments rent, something like that. That was pretty cheap, okay? And that actually drew a fair bit of traffic to to your site. So now it's unclear. I think it's unclear to me as to just how much of that traffic are real human beings, right? Because there are things called click bots that just there are programs that just click on things on the internet, and Google is one of them, right? So I think you have to be you have to be careful with that kind of stuff, right? Just because you have let's say 10,000 page views doesn't mean 10,000 people visited your page, okay? Uh, I think what would be more important is turnover, right? So if people signed up with a form or people made a purchase, that's indicative. Of, so, you know, when I had my apartment site, when people put up postings, right, I could, I could see that people were, real people were, um, were using the site. Um, AdSense actually is also an, another neat program, and that's if you have content. If you have content, you can throw up your web page and then basically you put the ads around your site. So Google picks the ads, you just put a little block of code and you say, this is where I want the ads in my web page to be. Okay? Um, and then, so actually my, my Toronto Rents website that I put no effort into, like after I developed it, I just, I didn't really maintain it. I made about $100 a quarter on people clicking on my links on my page. And that was from maybe a thousand unique views a month. Right? So it wasn't no money. A hundred dollars isn't like money I can quit my job or whatever. But there is money to be made. Okay? So, and then what Google does is Google is able to pick targeted ads based on your website. So if you have a blog about baseball, and then you put ads on, Google will read your site and put up ads for whatever bats or you know, whatever people are interested in baseball or interested in buying. Okay? So if you have a really popular video blog or uh, you know, some sort of, you're writing articles, news articles, um, you can make some money using AdSense. Right? Uh, same thing with, with YouTube. So I've, uh, again, I have made, I've only made about a dollar, but in my YouTube account, um, I have monetized a few of my lectures that I recorded. So, you know, there are, there's opportunity to, to make money on YouTube and, and Google, right? If you have content that people want, um, you know, you could very easily put together an ad-based business model that you could never do on your own, right? How much, you're, you're going to contact baseballexpress.com and negotiate some ad agreement with, no, that would never ever happen. But Google just is this middleman, right? And uh, so that's something you should be aware of, okay? Okay, any questions about that, about search engine optimization? And, you know, really it's just, you, you, you need to make a, a good website <laughs> that has relevant content that people want to look at, right? And 
uh, you know, there are other things you can do now with social media. You can try and take advantage of, you know, sharing and viral marketing and things like that. There's, so th there's more options than just uh, search engines. Right. Okay. So, um, let's, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to talk about server-side technology today. Okay. So, uh, remember last week, <laughs> We, uh, we installed a bit of software called WAMP, right? And what does WAMP stand for again? What does WAMP stand for? Yep. Yep. Yep, and MySQL, exactly. So um, that is, that's the technology, that's the technology stack that you would, that basically, you know, I would say 90% of the servers on the internet, well, not Windows, they don't use Windows. Most servers use Linux, um, but from your perspective, it doesn't really matter, okay? So, <laughs> what we've been doing up until today, and, well, not including the WordPress stuff, is we've been doing all client-side technology, right? So remember when I showed you the difference between serving a web page from File Explorer or serving the web page from the web server, right? So, remember I started up WAMP, okay? And let me, uh, I think I might have to close Skype if it's open, no? Nope. Okay, so, <coughs> I'm gonna go to, so remember when you installed WAMP, it set aside a specific directory in the install, so WAMP www, that's the folder, right? So remember, we went here, and I created a, so we'll say, oops, oh, where did that go? We'll call this server, server side. Okay. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to create a new file. So we're going to start use. we're going to, today I'm going to show you a new type of script today called PHP, okay? So we store HTML documents in .html, we store CSS in .css, we store JavaScript in .js, and we're going to store PHP files in .php. Now remember, that's fairly arbitrary. The extension, the file extension is primarily to help applications determine how to handle your files, okay? But we could set our web server, uh, I'm pretty sure, to handle any file extension, as long as the script is PHP script, okay? So if, I'm going to open this now. And so if I do this, if I say open with... Um, I can't even open it in Chrome. It's not going to open for me. Um, okay, Chrome, and then... Okay, so if I tri try and drag this in here and open it like we've been opening all the files so far, it's just, it's going to show us exactly what we typed, right? So the way we indicate in PHP script, yep. Yes, we need the question mark. So remember, in JavaScript, we use the script tag. <coughs> um, jQuery, we use the dollar sign. We're actually going to use the dollar sign again today for something else. But So the way we, we tell it that it's going to be PHP is we open up the PHP script by saying angle bracket question mark PHP, and then we have um, question mark angle bracket the other way. So everything in here is going to be PHP code, okay? So if I, let's say, the, one of the most common <coughs> functions in PHP is the echo function. So that just means print to the screen. So if I say hello world, okay, and I save. So if I refresh here, and I'm so I'm serving up a file from my file explorer, it's not going to work properly. The PHP, it didn't catch 
right? It doesn't know that it's PHP. So, right, your, your browser does not process PHP, your server does. So what we have to do is we have to go to localhost, and then we have to go to the, to the folder that we created, and the file. Oops, no, we don't want server test, we want server side. And see now, it echoes out hello world, rather than printing out all that PHP stuff. Okay? Okay, so that's the big difference. Now we're going through, we're not going through File Explorer, we're going through Apache. <coughs> okay, so thankfully, um, a lot of things between PHP and JavaScript are the same, are similar if not the same, okay? So what are the three pillars of programming? The three pillars of programming. Loops, ifs, ifs, that's ifs. Loops, already said loops. Variables, okay. So, all those things exist in PHP and you can use them almost the same way that you use them in JavaScript, okay? Okay. So before I get into the details, um, let me just talk for a sec about what PHP is and does. Okay, so it is a server-side script. Okay, what does it do? So the main things that it does. Oh, is this still? Yeah. Okay. So one of the main, main things that it does is it handles sessions. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? So that, what that does is it helps maintain a global state between pages. Okay, so when I go to Facebook, I go to the first page and I log in. Okay. Now the state, the system state is Carmen has logged in. Okay, so I'm on the first page. Now I go to the second page and I'm, I'm still logged in. The system state is still Carmen is logged in, right? Uh, you know, let's, let's have a look here. Look at my Facebook account, right? So I'm logged in and even, even when I close the browser, it knows it's able to maintain it. So I have to go, if I want to log out, how do you log out of Facebook? I go here. Yeah, I don't know, I've like never, I never do. Because it's, yeah. Oh, here, okay. So I have to log out, and, and it's what it's called, it's destroy the session. So now, no matter what page I go to in Facebook, it, it's, I'm not logged in, right? But if I log in again, uh, I can't even remember my password. I log in so frequently. So now the session, now look, so I've, I'm here on my main page. Now let's say I go to this event page called Honda Shadow Owners, and I go here. This is another page. But notice the state, I'm still logged in. The, web, the, the global state of the web page has not changed. I'm still logged in, right? Because imagine if every time you went to a new page, you had to re-log in. That would be crazy, okay? So, so far, you haven't learned anything that allows you to do that. So, PHP... Yes, that's what, yeah, site to site is something totally different. Um, you could, yeah, you can't do that with sessions. That's different. Um, what else does PHP do? So it interfaces between HTML and MySQL. Okay, so what you can do with PHP is remember we went to PHP MyAdmin, right? And we made 
we made server we made some queries on our database right remember we 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 did a select all and we we pulled up all the rows in our database so we can actually run those queries in php send them to our mysql database the database then returns something that's called an array an array is just a list of variables right and then with that array you can print stuff from the database into your web page okay and i think we will probably have time for me to show you maybe a quick demo of both of these things okay um let me think quickly what else does php do uh these are the big ones really let me just have a quick peek in my notes here say here. Let's just skim through these quickly. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to go over all this. We already talked about this. I'll, I'll just stop. This. Okay. So, this is a good diagram of how the architecture works. Okay. So, remember your database may or may not be housed on the same physical machine. It can be, okay? So um, your PHP script runs on the web server, okay? Your, your client machine will make an HTTP request to the web server. That web server will run the script. The script will run and get the stuff from the database, send it back to the web server, which then sends it back to the client, okay? <coughs> okay. Um, <laughs> So we looked at, okay, maybe we'll just get right into the nitty gritty. Okay, so one of the things you can do with PHP, so let's go back here. Uh, what should we start with? Okay, so what we're going to start with is remember that PHP returns text. That's it, okay? So that text could be, could include HTML okay so what we could do is we could embed HTML code into the text that we get PHP to echo okay so see this this is gonna echo this whole string <clears throat> now I go back here localhost server side server side <coughs> index.php okay so see now now I have a bit of HTML served up by PHP okay now what are the three pillars again of uh, so we're gonna do, put some comments in, in our PHP okay so slash star and star slash everything in between there will be ignored okay so remember the first one is variables the second one are loops and the third one is conditional statements okay so <coughs> let's start with a loop just like in JavaScript there are two types of loops what are those two types of loops for and while loop so let's do um, let's do a for loop Okay, so the for loop looks almost the same. No, you know what? Before we do that, I'm just going to back us up. We're going to do variables first. Okay, variables.